Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I have yet another truth BOMB. These receipts keep on coming in y'all. They are very, very necessary because um, a lot of times we say things in which we've been saying things for as long as I can remember and folk don't want to hear it. But when the truth comes from the other side, you know, folks ears tend to perk up if you know what I mean. So anyway, this guy, this white man, he's going to be exposing his own race by telling their dirty little secrets to black America and the world. And in this, he's even going to explain that there is a punishment attached to that. That there are consequences for people like him who stand on the right side of the truth. So anyway, I'm going to let you hear him tell the story. And of course, you know, I will be right back. So I thought I'd do a little video about why most white people don't speak out against racism. This video was inspired by someone who I respect, he posted a Facebook status the other day. He said, how come all the other white people don't go so hard on the bad white people? You know, something comparable to how black people will work hard to debate any of the bad black people who are simply frustrated with white impression. Why don't white people speak out against their own like we do? So I'm going to try to answer that to my best ability, mainly because motherfuckers go on the path of least resistance, you feel me? People tend to seek pleasure and avoid pain. And that's like law number one. We do things that we're rewarded for and we avoid things that we're punished for. And in order for white to survive, people who are for white are going to be rewarded. People who are against white are going to be punished. So for anyone who speaks in favor of white people, they get rewarded. For anyone who speaks out against white people, they get punished. And it doesn't matter what the race is of the person doing this talking. You know, it could be a white person speaking for or against white people, black person speaking for or against white people. Either way, the way you get treated depends on what your response is and what you're saying. Basic man. Take, for example, a black person who speaks out against black people. You know, this goes way back to slavery. Those who lived in the house versus those who lived to feel whatnot. You know, nowadays it's usually black conservatives, quote unquote, they say, who will point the finger at other black folks and say, OK, you're the problem. You know what I'm saying? We're the problem. We're fucking up. That's why we're in the condition we're in. They shift the blame from white supremacy to a supposed black moral or cultural inferiority. And of course, white folks buy this, shit, you know what I'm saying? They laugh that shit up because it supports some of their ingrained racist beliefs. He helps them sleep at night. He either, he either justifies their racist beliefs that they already had, or he helps them maintain their illusion that racism is over and that, you know, there are no racially based limits to your success in this world. And therefore, any failings you have on your part are based on your own failings, you know, not a system of oppression. You might get called a sellout or a Uncle Tom by other black people, but that doesn't really matter because they don't hold the power. You know, they're not the ones who can actually hold him accountable. It's usually going to be a white person who's signing his paycheck at the end of the day. It's a white person who decides whether he gets promoted or not whether he even has a job or not, nine times out of 10. A lot of these dudes even have careers just speaking out against other black folks, you know what I'm saying? Because white people will pull them out. Whenever, you know, something happens, they want to blame on white people, well, pull out the black conservatives. All right, so that's one side of it. Other side is white people who speak for the interests and for the benefit of black folks. And what happens with us? Most white people in this country either feel they have an interest in maintaining white supremacy or at minimum, you know, in not opposing it. Because when white people do take a stand, we get ostracized for it. And if you haven't seen that happen, it's probably just because white folks who speak out in the interest of black people rarely make it on TV. We don't get called in for the interviews. You know, sure, you got some white folks who will proclaim colorblind beliefs. You know, they say we're not racist on Martin Luther King Day. They all get around and sing Kumbaya, which is great. I'm not knocking that. But what I'm saying is when it comes to actually challenging white supremacy in a real way or pointing out systemic injustices in this country, suddenly they're not around. Suddenly they don't want to speak about it. They, they opt out of the conversation. 
most white folks, you know, or it, when they do go hard, they go hard on historical injustices. They, they go hard on slavery. They go hard on Jim Crow, you know what I'm saying, segregation, but they don't go hard on current systemic injustice. Only time they speak out against what's happening right now is when they're going against extremists, you know what I'm saying? Donald Sterling, they'll throw him under the bus. The KKK, neo-Nazi skinheads, all that shit, they'll throw them under the bus. But all these people who subconsciously support white supremacy without even realizing it, they're left untouched. They always come to the defense, making excuses for them. And also the media always portrays this whole thing as a black problem as well. You know, not, not taking into account the fact that the race problem in this country is actually a white problem. Because white people, for the most part, are holding the strings that actually keep this shit perpetuated. And anyone who identifies too closely with blacks, we get written off, you know what I'm saying, laughed at, looked out as clowns. They come up with words. Back in the day, it was, you know, N-word lover. You know, they, they call us wiggers, you know, all, all these different words they have to dismiss and shut down basically white folks who get too close to black folks and it's funny because on one hand you'll see the white saviorism mentality you know they got these movies coming out where it's all like the white people helping out the poor black people you know this paternalistic idea we have but but that's a fictionalized version the actual white folks who really put themselves on the line and, and died for this shit, you never hear them mentioned. They don't talk about them in Black History Month. They don't talk about it when they're talking about the Civil Rights Movement. They don't talk about John Brown. You know what I'm saying? Hell, I can't even name most of the white activists from the past. And me being who I am, I should know. Most of us don't even know because it's hard. You got to dig deep to find that shit. And I'll tell you why. It's because... They don't want us to see that. They don't want us to identify with that. They don't want us to see that as an option for us. If we look at it like black folks stand up for black folks, white folks, all we have to do is just quote unquote, not be racist, uh, you know, and just go about li living our lives in comfort. Well, this is what happened. Black folks get the impression that we don't care. They get the impression that white folks just don't give a because of what they go through every day and what we continuously fail to acknowledge. Or even if we do acknowledge, we fail to do anything about it or speak out actively against it. And then white folks, because we don't see other white folks standing up for it, we get the impression that it's not our battle. We're not told the story that it's our battle. You know, the, and the cycle just keeps continuing, continuing on and on. Hell, I've even got people close to me, people who I know are not racist in their heart, who preach humanitarian values, all, all this shit. They've told me this is not my battle. Why are you fighting this? People I know and love. And when otherwise well-meaning white folks tell me that this isn't my fight, I ask you a question. Why the fuck isn't it yours? How about that? Think about that. Okay. So this man told the truth. I didn't detect any lies. Now, most of us, we already know everything that he just said. It doesn't come as a surprise to us at all. But of course, we do have sleepers. People who want to pretend like all is well. And I'm talking about so-called black folk and white folk who want to pretend like all is well. And that the playing field is level and they know it's not okay they know it's not level but they want to live in the land of make-believe and say that it is and that's simply so that they can just exist without thinking about what is very obvious is right in our faces now this man he laid this truth out there and he explained that people like him who speak out against this sort of thing they are ostracized. They are mistreated. And in some cases, uh, there were times where many would lose their, their ability to breathe, if you know what I mean. That's how it used to be. 
And I wouldn't be a bit surprised if it's still that way. But we are dealing with a very slithery, sneaky, sly enemy who right now is being deceived by the pride of their own hearts. This is what the Bible says. It's a prophecy. It says the pride of your heart have deceived you. In other words, they believe that they can continue to do what they are doing forever and ever and ever. And I believe that the Most High has blinded their hearts, right? He said, I'm going to send you a strong delusion. See, most people think about strong delusion as something that's only um, as it relates to scripture. No, but that's talk, strong delusion. That covers a whole lot of bases, y'all. The most High sending them the strong delusion. They even believe that nobody can bring them down to the ground. That's what the scripture says, right? They said, who shall bring us down to the ground? Who shall be able to make war with us? Right? This is why the Bible tells us, it says, you shall know them by their fruits. There are going to be some defining markers to determine who is who in the world. And the pride of the heart is one of the biggest indicators of who Edom is. But anyway, this man, he exposed, he exposed a lot of dirty secrets. You know, again, we already knew it. So it was no secret to us, but they, in their minds, believe all of this stuff is a secret. Some of them act like we don't know. And that's I guess that's because some of our people pretend like they don't. A lot of our people think that if they just ignore things or pretend like it's not really happening, if they just don't believe the evidence of their own eyes and ears, that maybe this stuff will just vanish away. We've even had people tell us over the years, if you guys will stop talking about it, it won't exist. If I'm not mistaken, I believe even Morgan Freeman made a statement like that, that if folk would stop talking about racism, it will just vanish away. And I'm like, in what universe? In what timeline are you talking about? Because this timeline that we live in, that's not the case. So anyway, I want you all to share your thoughts on all of this stuff that this man exposed about his own race. Again, many of us, are not surprised by what he said at all. We already know. But for those of you who continue to be shocked and surprised by these things, like, oh my, oh my word. <laughs> what do you think? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. As always, keep it tight and keep it right. But until the next live or the next video, stay prayed up. We hope you liked today's topic. Please leave your comments below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, share it like this video, and with that, we're out. Be sure to ring the bell to be notified of new uploads on this channel, and also comment, share, like, and subscribe.